The stage in Flash Professional is where everything visible happens in regard to Flash content. This lesson describes the stage and the surrounding work area. So here we see I have a demo project open up. And I'm also in the Essentials workspace. So in the Essentials workspace, the stage is located directly above the timeline. The timeline is this area that we see on the bottom here with all these different frames and it describes how to use motion and that motion is represented up here on the stage. The stage itself, if I toggle all of these layers of visibility to off, we can see that the stage is this big black rectangle here. And from the properties inspector, we can see that it measures at 550 pixels wide by 400 pixels tall in this specific example. If I turn this back on, we can see the content once again. Now, if you notice, as I move the playhead along the timeline here, we have some objects that are flying in from outside of the stage, such as this text here. And we also have objects that are sliding to each side of the stage into this sort of gray area. Now this gray area is what is known as the pasteboard or the work area. So if I go in to control and I say test movie test, it's going to export our SWIF and we can see that we don't actually see any of the material that's located within the work area. We only see what's been visible through the stage. So the work area can be used to hide things for certain amounts of time or to simply experiment on. So we could pull this over and start sketching something here. And anything that we do, you know, maybe they're little notes or little ideas that we want to try later, they won't necessarily show up when we publish the SWIFT. So that's the work area. Directly above the stage and work area is this little bar right here. And this bar has to do with the stage and animation. So right here we see we're in scene one. If we were to actually go within a nested object, so this is a movie clip symbol instance here. And if we go in here, we can see we're now in left wall, which is the name of this movie clip symbol and within scene one. So we can back out of a specific object using this arrow, or we can simply click on another object that's above it. So if I click on scene one, we go back out to the document root. Over here, we can edit our scenes. So we only have one scene in this portion, and a scene is basically a portion of the overall timeline. You'll always have at least one scene being represented by the timeline. But if you want to, you can actually divide the main timeline up into a variety of different scenes. And if you have a variety of scenes, you can jump between them using this control right here. We also have access to edit our particular movie clip symbols that are being used here. So I only have two in this particular movie, but we can jump into any of these symbols and edit them if we want to. The last thing we have is this little control here that allows us to zoom in, so go to like 400%, and we can use these scroll bars to move around and so forth. So if we go back to 100%, we can see now that our actual stage isn't centered anymore. So here's a trick in order to get that centered once again at 100%. We can go in here and say that we want to fit in window, and that's going to automatically center the stage for us. And then we can pop right back to 100%, and everything is going to be exactly in the center of our work area here. So that's a nice little trick to know. You'll see here we can also show frame, show all, or we have these preset percentages. You can also type in a percentage here, so if we wanted to go to 80%, we can do that. So this has been 
a demonstration of different aspects of both the stage and the work area within Flash Professional CS6.